Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night, the IU baseball team prepares to enter the toughest stretch of its season. And IU softball seeks to recover from a bad weekend as it plays its final home games of the season. This is Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I am Juan Diego Alvarado. And I'm Austin Matricardi. On Tuesday night, Jeff Mercer's Hoosier baseball team traveled up to Indianapolis to take on Ball State at Victory Field. Our Matt Cohen was in the building for the in-state clash. He's got the recap. Well, Indiana head coach Jeff Mercer said he isn't a big believer in momentum. It was the late inning play of the Hoosiers against Ball State Tuesday night at Victory Field that has, that has a team full of momentum heading to the toughest stretch of the season. It's a big league play. I don't say those things very often. That is a bona fide big league play. The jump, and then here's the crazy part about it, it's in a one-two count, so I coach up first, I've got him rolled over and down. So he's over and down on an elevated fastball, and the guy gets on top, which they never do. He, they never get on top of that one, especially off Manus. And he, he thumps, that's at the base of the wall, it's 400 feet away. And, and for him to go make that play, he, he's got a special skill set. But again, if you don't work that skill set, if you don't work that athleticism, you don't, work, you don't get jumps like that. So it's not what he is, it's not what God gave him, it's, who he's working himself and his craft to become, which is an elite defender. And then done that a couple of times, and it changed the game. IU quickly fell behind three to nothing in the first three innings of this game before bouncing back to take a four to three lead with Grant Richardson's single through the right side of the infield, capping it off and giving IU the lead. IU held on to that lead with the, with, with the bullpen being clutch, and it was Gorski's catch out in right center field that gave, that gave IU the momentum it needed, heading to the top of the ninth inning, where it pulled away in this game and pulled away for its 9-3 victory. It's momentum that's going to be important for IU. It's won 11 of its last 12 games now, and it's heading into the toughest stretch of the season. IU plays Minnesota and Bloomington beginning on Friday. The Hoosiers still have to play Illinois, Michigan, Kentucky, as well as Louisville. All teams that have the potential to make the NCAA tournament this season. It's the toughest stretch of the season for the Hoosiers, but they're going into it with momentum. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Matt Cohen. Insightful as always, Matt. The series between the Hoosiers and the Golden Gophers gets underway on Friday night at 6. With only a handful of games remaining, Indiana softball already has a season for the record books. Our Jordan Gold tells us why. Swiping bags and breaking program records. With her players, Indiana softball head coach Sonda Stanton is setting the pace for the future, causing havoc on the base paths. I would say that when we get on, we're like almost itching for that steal sign. I know a lot of people say that we run like track, or like track um, people, but um, so I think from that stance, it helps get us a lot of explosion out of our legs, and so just to go hard into the next bag. And they run like ex-track stars because, well, they have an ex-track star. My senior year is like when I had a big breakthrough and I ran the fastest times I've ever ran and like we broke two school records and I was like the second fastest in school history and in the 100 and in the third and in the 200. As the stolen base numbers continue to rise, Stanton and her coaching staff have come up with a creative way to reward their players for tallying up those steals. Um, Coach Fern found these swings online, and they're these little wings that you put on your shoes. And you know the slogan is uh, uh, "Stack them high, let them fly." We get um, five stolen bases, we get red ones, and then 15 we get white, and then 25 stolen bases we get silver, and then I think it's 40. Is it 40? It's 40 yeah. or 40. 40 or 45 we get gold. And with the competitive nature of this team, each are confident they'd be able to outrun the other in a race. Me. Me. <laughs> me. Me. For sure me. I have the fastest no, time. No, get out of here. Yes, I do. It doesn't matter in 100. Yeah, it was the most stolen bases. For IU Sports Media, I'm Jordan Gould. The Hoosiers will play the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in Bloomington this weekend, with Friday's game started at 6 o'clock. Make sure to follow our IUSTV Sports social media accounts for all of your updates. The women's tennis team said goodbye to two seniors in their final homestand of the season. 
Indiana played its last two matches before the Big Ten tournament over the weekend. The Hoosiers beat Rutgers on Saturday 5-2 and Maryland on Sunday 6-1, but that wasn't the main focus of the weekend. Madison Appel and Natalie Whalen played in their final home matches of their careers. The duo recorded wins in both contests, leaving Bloomington on a high note. Following the victories, there were a lot of emotions on the court. I was writing my speech last night with my boyfriend next to me and I was saying, yeah, I'm not emotional. And I was only like a page and eight pages later, I'm bawling my eyes out. So the emotions are definitely setting in now. To finish up the way we did, very special. I love this senior class and I'm going to miss them. Indiana was named the seventh seed in the tournament, facing Iowa on Thursday. Their run was cut short as they fell to the Hawkeyes 4-2. As postseason play bounces our way, there was a lot of expectation on the Indiana men's tennis team. Joining us is our very own tennis reporter, Drew Fry. Welcome, Drew, and it sounds like you got a pretty interesting story for us. Thank you, Juan. Yes, I do. Now, when I mention the men's tennis team's uniforms, what do you think of? Can you even picture them? Well, needless to say, they're not really oozing with swagger. Well, IU junior Zach Brodney decided he needed a little bit of that swagger in his tennis game, so he decided a wardrobe change might help get him going. I got the chance to talk to Brodney about his pre-match fashion choices. If you arrive early to an IU tennis match, you'll probably see Zach Brodney warming up. Not in his uniform, like everyone else, but in a basketball jersey. I like to wear a Kobe jersey before every match because he's one of my uh, biggest idols that I've looked up to, watching him since I was like five, six years old. Just his mentality, the Mamba mentality. I try to adopt that put it on the court every day, every practice, every match. So I just, I like to surround myself with, with this greatness and hopefully some of it can rub off on me. What started as a gimmick back in January has turned into a season long trend, even featuring other jerseys from his collection. I got, I got a decent amount. I, I've worn, selfishly, I've worn my high school jersey because you know, I played a little ball in high school for those of you who didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so I had to bring that out a couple of times, but this is definitely my favorite one. While the Southern California native does change back into his uniform for match play, he builds off the confidence his jerseys bring him in warm-ups. I mean, I wouldn't play, uh, I wouldn't play a match in it, just because I don't know, it's it's just not the right, not the right feel. But in practice, it just adds a little bit of swagger, add a little, little jump to my step that I just get from from wearing it. It's, it's what gives you that little one percent edge over the competition, and I feel like. You know, just standing out and, and doing things like this just gives me that mental edge that I have that I'm willing to put it all out there and do whatever it takes. Brodney will start off his senior season next spring and says that fans will just have to wait and see if he breaks out the jerseys once again. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Drew Fry. So Drew, tell me, what's next for IU men's tennis? Well, the men's tennis team is currently in the middle of postseason play. It will be up to the NCAA committee to determine whether they can get a bid into the actual NCAA championships. They haven't had one for a little while in these past several years under Coach Wurtzman, but they do have a real shot this year. They are ranked in the top 50, so it, the fate is kind of in their hands. Thanks, Drew. Definitely something to watch as the time progresses, as their season progresses. Over the weekend, there was track and field action as well. The Hoosiers saw five PRs between events in California, Kentucky, and Alabama. The women are now ranked second in the Great Lakes region, and the men are ranked third. We're halfway home here, so we're going to take a short break, but stick with us. When Hoosier Sports Night continues, we'll show you how one of the youngest teams on campus is gearing up for the postseason. And also, when we return, check out where IU Rowan will be competing for its final meet of the regular season. You're watching Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. Over the weekend, the Hoosier water polo squad took to the pool against McKendry and earned a big win. Now they're getting ready for postseason play. Our Maxwell Glenn dives into their final regular season game and what lies ahead. Indiana water polo finished the regular season with a dominant win, besting McKendry 14 to four. I was happy with what we tried to execute. You know, we had a specific game plan that we went to execute. We weren't too focused on the offensive end. We were focused a lot more on the defense and what we were trying to run. 
We wanted to keep them under four goals and we thought we were really consistent throughout the whole game, which is what we were aiming for. Strong performances by young players versus McKendry provided great promise for their years to come. However old or young you are, we need you because we have three players on the bench. They're not really freshmen anymore. Everybody's the same. They know what they have to do and they're executing and that's part of why we're so successful in certain aspects of the game. Our aim of this season has been getting everyone to step up in the pool and just building their confidence. While Hoosiers ended their season with a bang, what lies ahead in California can prove to be a daunting challenge. Coach Castle said the most important thing is keeping things positive. The season behind us is about taking opportunities in front of us and just putting them away. While the Hoosiers won by 10, the team has found room for improvement heading into the end of the season. But that's as far as they're looking. But well, we're trying not to focus on next year. Right now, we're just one step at a time. Friday, we're going to play the number two seed. Um, and then Saturday will be a more competitive game. So we're watching a lot of film, a lot of um, working on a lot of plays for that game. Give every single thing you've got. Try not to turn it into a learning experience. Turn it into, I want to attack and I want to own what's in front of me. The Hoosiers will see their next action in the MPSF tournament at Stanford University. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Maxwell Glenn. The Hoosiers will take on second-seeded USC on Friday afternoon at 2. For a third consecutive season, the Indiana rowing team took the Dale England Cup home at Lake Lemon. The 20th-ranked Hoosiers would walk away from their only home meet of the season with a victory after taking down Notre Dame and Michigan State. Indiana finished in the top spot with 72 points, while Notre Dame finished in second with 48 points and Michigan State rounding things out with 42 points. The top finish comes thanks in part to strong performances in both the first Varsity 8 and Varsity 4 races. Up next, the Hoosiers will travel to Austin, Texas to compete in the Longhorn invite to close the regular season. The IU men's golf team secured an 8th place finish out of 13 teams this past weekend at the Hawkeye Invitational in Iowa City. Junior Brock Oxenreiter shot a 65 in the final round, which put him at 5 under for the tournament, and he tied for an 11th place individual finish. Freshman Mitch Davis's score of 73 in the final round put him in an even par and tied for 25th place. Senior Jake Brown opened his final collegiate round with back-to-back -back birdies, tying for 39th place, while sophomore Ethan Shepard finished in a tie for 43rd at 5 over par. Before the NCAA championships begin on May 13th, Indiana will travel to the East Coast for the Big Ten Championship at the Philadelphia Cricket Club. The 54-hole event begins on Friday and ends on Sunday. With a great performance in the Big Ten Tournament, IU Women's Golf is now qualified for the National Championship. The women's golf team was in Mainville, Ohio, playing at TPC Rivers Bend in the Big Ten Championship. The Hoosiers had a strong weekend, finishing in a tie for second place, shooting a combined two over par in a shortened two-round championship. Senior Erin Harper led the way for the Hoosiers, tying the school record shooting a 66 in the second round on her way to a third-place finish, shooting four under par in the tournament. The Hoosiers' strong performances at the Lady Boilermaker Invitational and the Big Ten Championship helped the team earn a bid to the NCAA Championship. The team will participate in the East Lansing Regional from May 6 through May 8. That will do it for this week's show and the semester here on Hoosier Sports Night. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in every week from Austin and myself to all the people behind the scenes. We'd also like to thank our fantastic engineers, Danny, Joe, and Mike, as well as our wonderful advisor, Kenny Smith, for all the help and guidance they provide throughout the year. One last time, for Juan Diego Alvarado, I'm Austin Machicardi. Thanks for watching.